Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. All right, and you know what? Let's do it. Let's record a podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome to 4Player Podcast. I honestly don't even know what episode number this is. Can anybody here enlighten me? 806. 806. Not that it matters, but 806. It is Tuesday, August 20th, 2024. My name is Nick Henderson. Uh, We got a skeleton crew tonight joined by Brad Simons. Hello. And Christopher Davis. Howdy doody. Good evening. Coming to you live from Austin, Texas. Um, and, well, that, that is technically not Austin, Texas. Just the outskirts of Austin, Texas. I, feel, I realize that I've listened to a lot of podcasts lately where people like like to say, hey, coming to you live from wherever. I was like, How, when was the last time we re- reminded people we're from Austin, Texas? I mean, it doesn't really fucking matter anymore. Austin is yeah, just what, this what gigantic megalopolis. It's funny know. you say that. I, I did a thing at work today. Let me be vague. Um where the boss boss of the whole place was like, y'all, y- everybody in your um, section needs to come up to my office because uh, I'm doing a thing where you're going to put pins on a giant map in the hallway about where, it, and it's going to be, you know, for where you're from, right? All over the world. Oh, oh like a yeah, world map. That's going to work out. Like, well. a, like, a, like a world map. And then, a, well, no, there's a US map and there's a world map. Anyways, we're putting pins with our names on it. And, we got up there and she like had a prepared speech, which was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. What? A prepared speech about how, how blah, 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 you know, come from all over the world. And, and it was like, it was pretty corny. And she acknowledged it was pretty corny before she said it. But like, at the same time, like it was pretty wild. And let me guess. Anyways. There were like two pins from outside North America. No, Maybe. that's not true. I was going to a, per, a, per, I a person, I, one of my coworkers in my section is, was born in Russia. I was gonna oh, guess that okay. somebody that there's only like one pin in Austin because like nobody. No, well, there's a bunch in from. Austin, and we were oh, okay. we were heckling the California people. Do you uh, know there, we just hired someone? She. Oh. She's from Carol. California. She calls the, and it makes sense that she's from California, but she calls thirty five the thirty five. And I, none of us can that, deal with it. That is so right out of the Californians from SNL. Yeah, she like, calls oh it the 35 God. and the one. Oh, it's I love it. The one? Insane. The one? Insane. No. <laughs> the no. One. Uh, oh, so gross. Oh, so man. You got to you gotta embrace the weirdness, man. That's cool. I love it. <laughs> the 35. Anyways. It sounded so wrong. I'm going to start. How I'm long gonna has this start. person been with the company? How long have they been oh, in Austin? No, no, no. <laughs> Not long. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start yeah. saying it like that to my wife and just see how long it takes for <laughs> to like just rip my head off. Um. Well, anyways, long. guys, guys, welcome to the show. Um. Yeah. We didn't record last week, right? Yeah. Right? Did we? No, we didn't. I we think we did. the, I've lost track a little we bit. We did something couple, last week. We've had. Trailer yeah, I think, we just, I think we just did a big trailer talk. Oh. It's been, look, 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 we're kind of in the midst of, I think, I feel like we're teetering on the edge of like a really, really, really big, intense release season. So it's been a little, uh, you know, I guess been that's some weeks. perspective. I mean, it depends on how you look at it, really. Yeah, Zelda that game is looks true. Hype, though. Is that Astro the only one? You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I'll take it away. Dude, I, I, I feel I, like, I feel like you're thinking about that list and the Venn diagram is like, you're excited about a lot of the things like I'm excited about as well, but also you have those Ubisoft games. The thing is, when I don't think about those Ubisoft games, I'm like, 
yeah, I guess there's a lot of cool games coming out. But if I cared about those as much as you did, yeah, I'd be losing my mind. I can tell you right now that, like, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, my top 10 list this year is probably going to be, like, 70 to 80% from the back half of this year or from what's coming between now and the end of December. That's how I that's how I feel about it right now. So I'm very much looking it forward to it. It is crazy that. because like you already are expecting these Ubisoft games to be on your but top you keep, 10 list. You keep, which means that dude, like it's dude, I'm not be even, sad. Look, 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 look. If they just stop bringing up Ubisoft because yes, I am excited about Star Wars Outlaws. I am excited about Assassin's Creed Shadows, but like Though, that could still go either way. Both of those games might miss my list altogether because they're disappointing. No, I don't fucking know, dude. I'm way. just I'm saying they can, they could. You don't, you never fucking know. I'm not even thinking about. I mean, I am excited about those. Don't get me wrong. But you act like the Venn diagram is like the entire part of the bubble that is just I'm trying to think. Me. Silent just Hill, Silent Hill games. as well. Okay, I'm Silent Hill, that. Stalker Two. Uh, Stalker pull- 2, can, but see, Stalker Two has a chance of letting you down way more than Assassin's Creed or Star Wars, right? I don't think so. I do because that game is all. Hey, look. I, mean, I mean, Chris Davis probably agrees. I mean, we don't even know if that game's really going to be listen, 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 out listen, of the listen. park home run. I mean, listen, we don't know. Listen, for me, Star Wars Outlaws, Astrobot, Space Marine 2, The Plucky Squire, Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom, Silent Hill 2, Life is Strange Double Exposure, Dragon Age The Veil Guard, Mario and Luigi Brothership, which I may not find time to play because I've never been that big on it, but it does look pretty cool. Assassin's Creed Shadows, Stalker 2. Um, th- that's just what I have on my little thing here, and I'm clearly forgetting some stuff. Um, Isn't it crazy that, like, for me, the hypest of the shit you said is, think about it, Count the Swords, Dragon Age The Veil Guard, yeah. Zelda, I guess technically it's not, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. fantasy. Zelda, a uh, uh, plucky squire, you know, mm-hmm. like I am fantasy sword pilled. You see what I mean? Most of that yeah. shit, eh, I can take it or leave it. Honestly, Astrobot, man, Astrobot. Well, Astrobot, everybody, Fair. Astrobot. I'm super excited about. I feel like, I, dude, I have a, I have a strong suspicion that Astrobot is going to be the game to beat at the end of the year. Like, yeah. I agree. That's, I agree. That's well, fair. Silk Song, yeah. of course. Silk Song, of course. <laughs> well, Silk Song, of course. It's time. It's time to it's time to take some serious copium, Brad. Silk I think. Song. We'll talk about it later. He he is Silk on song, weapons yeah. grade copium right now. <laughs> weapons grade copium, Silk guys. Song. Listen, listen. Uh, it's Gamescom week, so we're going to talk a little bit about games. You, Gamescom. Um, I just, we're all, look. Let me get through this Silk intro, song. Brad. Let me get through this song. intro. Yo, yeah. we're going to shut your mouth. <laughs> Shut You're your gonna mouth. Be, I just want to say you if Silk Song comes out, you might as well just send me the money now. You're lucky Silk Song ain't coming out. All right. I am, actually. I recognize this. Okay. Look, look, look. Uh Gamescom opening night live was today, and it was a little bit uh it's a I mean, I don't know. I don't know how y'all felt I, about I mean, it. I don't know. It like, was okay. Because it's Gamescom opening night live, I'm not as disappointed as I was with like uh sgf because that's like the big e3 replacement and that seemed a lot way more disappointing um especially because a lot of this stuff it doesn't give me a lot of quantity was at sgf it doesn't give me a lot of hope for the game awards this year because i feel like two out of three so far has been kind of see the game awards i feel like is probably the biggest out of all of those three that jeff Keighley does i i just feel like 2023 was such a big fucking year for releases like Anything this year for announcements or releases is just in the back of our minds, not as exciting. And we're just okay, having to whoa. deal with that reality. He just doesn't have the good stuff. He doesn't have Nintendo. Uh, he doesn't have Sony. He barely, he doesn't have Microsoft. He doesn't also, have the big three at his things. Not also, really. we haven't really mentioned this on the show. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about it because I don't know a lot about it. But there is a strike that just started having to do with with video game voice actors mm-hmm. pushing back against AI, right? I don't know. I don't know all the specifics of that, but obviously good for them. Um, and that has the potential to really turn next year and the year after that into maybe a little bit of a sparser situation. So we might be seeing like some of these like preview shows events might be already starting to feel kind of the like maybe some maybe some things are pulling out because they can no longer they don't they no longer feel confident that they're going to be able to hit their their targets because of the strike. I don't know. That's just speculation. I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I feel like a lot of these publishers are just so fucking ruthless with money that they're willing to just say, "Okay, fuck it. Let's just get non-union talent to do voice acting." 
I guarantee you we're going to see a lot of that in the next 18 months because of this strike. Ugh, possible. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about it if, if that day comes. But uh, anyways, it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm i very optimistic right now. I'm very excited for what's to come. Uh, this year so far for me has been somewhat slow. Uh, but I'm very excited for the back half. And I think that kicks off here pretty pretty quick. Um, so we're going to talk about Gamescom, the highlights. And last week we didn't do a show. But big, big news I want to make sure we find time to talk about, which is that Tango Gameworks and Hi-Fi Rush was essentially uh, scooped up and saved by Crafton, the publisher behind... That's crazy. It's just, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't see that coming. But Crafton is, the, is, as of right now, the only major game under their belt that I, can, that I know of is the Callisto Protocol. Um, and PUBG. I and PUBG, right? So PUBG, the PUBG Callisto and protocol, PUBG modal, mobile. They've got all that money. Oh yeah. my fucking god! They Which can, is they weird. They could buy up half of of Embracer if they wanted to with all. So this money. so what? What is it? They just have a big Hi-Fi Rush fan who feels bad. I mean, obviously, well, no. I don't think this is a purchase you make because you see like the crazy profit in it. Right. Well, I mean, l- this listen, is listen, listen. I, I semi think semi goodwill, semi. I think it's. I think it maybe has more to do with goodwill because there was obviously a huge response from the gaming community to see what happened yeah. to Tango GameWorks and see that Hi-Fi Rush was basically dead on the vine for only one game, and that was that game was a was a massive critical success. So, you know, I think there is definitely some money to be made there. But to be suddenly known as the publisher that saved Tango Gameworks, I, I don't feel like it's what a was left of Tango Gameworks because not right. everybody got hired not, back. We, we, yeah. it's just to be. I mean, a lot of those people had to move on. They couldn't wait, obviously, so they had to yeah. move on. Um, but it does mean more immediately that uh, first of all, Hi-Fi Rush, the actual rights to Hi-Fi Rush, transferred with Tango Gameworks. So yes, Crafton. And I would imagine they were jumping on this pretty quickly because that was kind of probably the point of that was probably the impetus for wanting to do this in the first place. I would imagine they're they have already greenlit a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush and they're they're starting on it. But this also, oh, yeah. I would imagine, does this does this mean? Does anybody know? Does does do things like the Evil Within stay with Microsoft? Yeah, they do. unfortunately, okay. which yes. means they're pretty much dead IP now. Gotcha. We'll never see that shit again. Um, yeah. And Shinji Mikami is not is still not at Tango Gameworks, so well, yeah. so his non compete clause, I believe, is over now. So, but I, do Mikami's you really see? He's already announced that he's. I mean, what are you talking about? That's old news. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, I believe also, it's Kamiya that we're still waiting on to see what he's going to do. He's still in the middle of a non compete. Yeah. My point is that Tango Gameworks, even though they they s- exist again, they're not going to suddenly start cranking out what we've come to know or expect from Tango Gameworks necessarily. Yeah. I mean, aside from Hi-Fi Rush, because Hi-Fi Rush 2 is one of the major reasons why Mikami's they did already place. founded a new studio, by the way. Yeah. Kamui, uh, Kamui Inc. Wait, really? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember this. Uh, I wonder what he's going to be working on. But anyways, that's great news, right? Like Hi-Fi Rush, we all loved Hi-Fi Rush here. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's and, just, you know, it's like, is this really going to be Tango Gameworks, Tango Gameworks? I mean... We'll see. You know, we've seen this kind of thing before, right? With like Embracer and like the Darksiders dev, you know, where it's like, oh, we have most of the people from that team and we're going to kind of keep making that stuff. And it's like, okay, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, Darksiders 3 is not quite like the fir- as good as cool. It ain't Darksiders team, 1 but, or 2, but you know, but but then they went on to make that other game that was really popular, uh, you know, the Resident Evil. <laughs> but I think, I think like, people what, would rather. Called? I think people would rather have a follow up to Hi-Fi Rush 2 just to see if they could if they could, you know, sure, of make something of it and not have it at all. And that's pretty exciting. So, um, but, you know, maybe they'll make something new that's even more exciting. Like, what is that? Series? I mean, Remnant, oh. Rem, the Remnant games, right? Like the Darksiders people went on to make those, which blew up and are a lot more successful than Darksiders was. So yeah, I mean, we've officially reached a new era of Tango Gameworks. It is, it is, it has gone through a transformation and Hi-Fi Rush is the one thing on the coming out the other side that we recognize, but is is one of those studios, right? You know, there's lots of studios that sort of reform from the ashes and end up doing cool shit, but 
we'll I mean, see. that is that is the industry, right? It happens with happens all the time. So yeah. I just like, wanted to Tango's make sure we have to go to through a rebuilding period over the next year or so before they can actually go into full on production on their next title. But yeah, it'll be like forever before we see anything. Yeah. Um, but still, great news. I think you know we were all pretty <laughs> devastated here when that happened. Hi Fi Rush was so great, so I, I'm super excited to see um, them take a stab at a sequel to that. And now it's looking like more and more like that's going to happen. Um, so, in other news, for, oh, for, there's a lot of different directions we could go here because games, like I said, Gamescom happened today, opening and not live. There's some things to talk about. We did just yeah, do we'll a trailer watch, talk. Yeah, watch, uh, pull up the Twitch VOD if you're listening to uh, this on a in podcast form. You know, if you want to see our thoughts on a lot of the stuff that was at opening night live, because not even half we did the a stuff long trailer there, talk, yeah. an hour long trailer talk, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, we did we did a trailer talk for a while. Watched a bunch, rewatched a bunch of the Gamescom stuff. So I just want to kind of hit the highlights, um, and or maybe lowlights. There's there was some weird stuff. There's some cool mm-hmm. stuff. Um, Peter Molyneux's new game. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh my god, oh, here we go. I feel like that's jumping into the deep end. Yeah, very. We quickly. don't even need to mention it. No, um, I, I need to I need to bitch about it. Well, it's going to be on next week's trailer talk. <laughs> okay, look. Just a c- few couple things. I want I want to I want to get your temperature on a few of these things. And then I want to just talk about some of the other uh release dates that were announced outside of Gamescoms because we got hit with a bunch of release dates this week. Um so the, they op- they pretty much opened with Borderlands 4, which is what a weird time to suddenly announce yeah. Borderlands 4 right after the movie bombed fucking hard and the um, worst fucking way worst fucking trailer they could possibly do to announce borderlands for it like, was it was a, a a teaser that was also very obviously borderlands even though it they were trying really hard to obscure the fact that it was borderlands which i thought was very strange um yeah. and then just right on on the heels like i said of the movie which was kind of a huge critical and i imagine financial flop uh, oh my god like astronomical like, like 89 like the million flop, dollars in the hole yeah it's the yeah. critical flop isn't even like that big of a deal anymore it's it's how much money it lost that's the real tragedy the movie is going to streaming on the 30th Ooh. well first of all that oh amazing. like the 30th like in 10 days yes Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean in theaters. yeah anyways they said they lost 60 million. Is that really the number? Something, Somebody in chat yeah, said something 60 like that. million. Yeah. God damn. The budget was a hundred million dollars and like it only made like what? Not. No, it was it was more than 60 million that they lost. Still, that sounds like a lot of money. The point that is, is fucking they insane. open with Borderlands 4. And look, there's there as much as it's it's weird, right? To announce a game after a movie bombs. But like movies and games are still a very different thing. We all know that 80 percent of movies based on video games are going to be bad. I don't think anyone was super surprised here to see that it was bad. So I don't know if this is going to do any like I, I feel like things are kind damage. of changing. It didn't have to be yeah, bad, it's, right? Yeah, it's changing. Definitely. You know, I, I feel mean, like we're entering an era where that stuff is better, right? Like when you have They should like, have just made a they should have made it a TV, TV show on HBO. Like, well, I mean, it's not even that, right? Like the Mario movie was fucking enormous, right? Right. Mm-hmm. It's things have Change slash are changing. It didn't have to be a tragedy. This is like Uwe Boll levels of uh, of yeah. <laughs> people's distaste. The Robin terrible, came into terrible Robin came into my room. Curtis. Robin came into my room while I was watching this trailer, uh, and I was like, "Oh my god, they're announcing Borderlands 4. And she came running because she loves Borderlands, and she was she was like, "Oh my god, it's Borderlands Four!" But immediately, she's not seen the movie. Immediately followed up with, "But that movie here is terrible." So I I don't even know if I'm excited about this. And I was like, "Oh wow." <sighs> Well, Even, uh, maybe don't be excited about Borderlands 4. Like, movie aside, like, modern day Gearbox is a little iffy anyway. So it's like, yeesh. I mean, but she's we'll enjoyed say, Borderlands 1 through 3. Like, so, I don't know. Whatever. Um, We're not the Borderlands crew, really. So one of the one of the things... I'm just going to kind of bounce around here. And if I miss anything or if you want to interject, by all means. But, like, one of the major Monster things Hunter they've been teasing... Awesome. Monster Hunter continues to look awesome. But one of the things they, they kept teasing prior to opening night live was the new game from Tarsier studios the studios behind little nightmares uh one and two we all know little nightmares three is being developed by supermassive games they announced a game called reanimal which albeit looks really cool 
But if you were to put a gun to my head and ask me to guess the title of this game before I knew what it was, I would have said Little Nightmares 3. <laughs> it looks very much like Little Nightmares. It looks like two small uh, characters running around this like world where everything is huge and all the people and there's just a bunch of like human animal hybrids and really creepy doing creepy things and chasing you throughout the universe. Which you know what I'm here. I'm here for it. I love little. I love little nightmares. But like, I'm I'm now very confused. <laughs> we have we have reanimal and little nightmares three. Which I look- mean, it's not. It's not. You know, we see it all the time. We saw it with Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. Which okay. You know, so I wanted to ask you about that because we didn't watch that trailer during trailer talk. Next Did week you not we will. think that looked really cool? Next week we will. That's why we didn't. Uh... Well, right. But what do you mean? This is a pot- you 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 keep saying that. I think it looks that. like fine. I think it looks okay. No, I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I'm saying it as a this is something that happens a lot where yeah, it does like, look, like it you know like that's strange. what happened with Dark Souls. You know, it just like there's right. some sort of like licensing disagreement or like a team or publisher wants to make a game but they can't get you know them. You know, we end you up know, with legally this distinct shit, sequels or yeah, this whatever, shit happens all the time. All the time. So um, you know. But to the, since you're talking, it looks about it, nice. Learned, Bloom and Rage looks nice. We don't really. I don't know what that game's gonna like play well, like or whatever. Or I like, think it's probably gonna play very similar to Life is Strange. But I, we know a little bit more about it now. And what I just want, I like, I was getting these vibes. I was like, okay, well, they were clearly always kind of going for this like kind of like '80s or '90s like ad, like young kids going on an adventure kind of vibe, like the Goonies or something. But like towards the end of the trailer, you start to see like flash forwards to one of the characters as an adult, and they're getting like menacing letters alluding alluding to like something that they did when they were kids and they're like oh my god do they know what we did and like holy shit is this the goonies means i know what you did last summer because i'm fucking here for it i love it that so i officially a good pitch i'm very excited for that that's also uh, he's jumping to conclusions there i mean i am I mean, gonna yeah. be about love and well, stuff yeah, of course of course but like they literally get a package that says uh, that says something like scribbled on it in like red ink that says like i know or i remember or I'll never forget. Or I was like, "This, this is fucking." I know what you did last summer. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. I saw I'm the TV it. glow. Do you have you seen that? I have or, not. It's on my list. That? I mean that that kind of see that that's a movie that has vibes, but then kind of goes places that you're not expecting. But what, whatever. Yeah, I think it looks cool. I think it looks nice. I like the visually looks nice. What el- what else? Um, what else from Gamescom was? Uh, I mean, we'll get to the stuff I mean, near the end. I, I just want to say that like. That Monster Hunter trailer was the third trailer for it is Monster Hunter Wilds trailer number three. And then there's the weapon videos. So you are wrong. Uh, you are well, just mad I about I think, what I said I about Space it's, Marine. I don't think it's, it's fair that you're not counting weapons videos as trailers. Because at this point, I'm just counting how much I feel like I've 14 s- days in a row and they're 50 seconds long. It's just, it's just but, that's not the same thing of, of like two to three trailers every fucking week for months about Space Marine. They got a hell I, of a I, marketing. I, they got a hell of a marketing uh, team going on. necessarily great marketing. I'm not clicking on them anymore. I mean, I don't. I mean, that's just you. But also. So it's not me. I, think I watched of, so many trailers. There's probably a point. There's probably a point where they like they went over. They went a little over the top on Space Marine 2 where they could have probably just reeled it in a little bit um, because now it's just diminishing returns on every ex, every new trailer that they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but hey, I'm excited for Space Marine 2. Uh, so looks he, here's neat. my thing about Space Marine 2 is that I'm I'm starting to come around on the game. My problem is, Come is that we're Space I didn't know you Marine, were not on. No, I, I've been very skeptical of this for a while because like half Sabre's the appeal of Space Marine 1 were the fucking orcs and the dialogue and the levity they brought to that overall game. Like the orcs were fucking hilarious to me. And oh, yeah. in this game, you're just Space fighting Marine one. Huh? I wouldn't. I've played Space Marine 1 now. Uh, I, I'm. I'm educated on the subject now. I can talk. I can speak to this. Okay. I, that is not a thing that even stood out to me about I, that game. Well, maybe, is that maybe really it's a just thing? like a taste thing? But like now, this is just like still hordes of enemies. But like the humor is gone to me. I always thought Space Marine was like super, just unforgivingly gritty and 
violent and I, like I don't remember there being much levity in the game at all. Did, am I just forgetting like a major component I, of that the, game? I feel like you are missing a lot. Like the the whole turret gunner sequence in which the the orcs are coming in with giant rocket packs on their back, like some kind of wily e. coyote bullshit. Like I don't understand what you're forgetting, but whatever. Well, I mean, that was a very I old guess, game at this point. I guess. I mean, I feel like that could still happen in this game. It is very serious, dude, bro. This new one, but like that it's is also serious. just Warhammer, right? That could also I mean, just, yeah. I mean, that's how I feel about most Warhammer. And also, you got to remember, as an it is it is marketing. So this, a lot of this could just be they're 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 being they're picking and choosing what they're showing because they know what has the most mainstream appeal. Like I I, I they probably know that that stuff that stuff's got to be. If that's a, if that is considered a, a major component of that that game, it's got to no, be. No, don't give Saber the benefit of the doubt. We'll see. Look, I'll, I'll say this: people are very excited about that game. A lot of people, and yes. I counterpicked it in Fantasy Critic, and I'm terrified. Mm, <laughs> you mm, mm, mm. Um, can I can I bring up a game that was uh, shown yeah. off at? Yeah, shoot, uh, Dying Light: The Beast. Ah, yes, the beast. That that's this, beast. Got, this got a, a public trademark last week, and it got revealed. You think you could take the beast? God, Brad, stop it. This is he. He blamed me for not being able to stop talking about split and glass before the show, but that's him that did that it. Is him. So the beast is now an expand alone project. This was originally did you say expand alone. Yeah, it is an expand. Is it was originally an expansion for Dying Light 2. It was going to be the, the second piece of DLC, and they just made it into a standalone game. Oh, like Silk Song. Song. Like Silk Song. Like Silk Song did, but it's actually... Com- one, this game's actually coming out. Um, look. Yeah, I mean, that's true, yeah. We, we know that's more true. about the release date for Dying Light the Beast than we do for Silk Song, yeah. I love Dying Light 1. And Dying Light is- 2... Dying Light 2 is maybe the mo- one of the most disappointing for me like cuz I was over the moon excited for that game and it let yeah. me down in a lot of ways. Well, the, um, I mean this game I do it's it's the original protagonist from Dying Light 1 and it and has it didn't call it actual Dying Light 2 the guns, beast guns like the original game. Like I feel like this is a rebuttal to well, the community's like ire about a bunch of aspects of dying light 2. i also don't think dying light one i mean i know it had guns per se but i don't think there was a lot i don't i would never describe dying light one as a game with guns they they were uncommon to be clear but like the like sequel 95 percent of that game was melee yeah absolutely but they were also a very powerful weapon that you saved for occasions were very fucking useful. True. True. This so, so this this expand alone. I can't I've never heard that term. Did you just make that really? up or is that just No. A, that's a okay. that's a fairly common term? Fuck me then. Okay. Ex- this expand alone game. Stand standalone expansion. How about that? I, I'm cool with the expand alone. I, okay. I like it. All right. I'm just saying. Um it didn't like I, I was immediately kind of taken aback because like I was like this like so much of what I what I wanted to be great about uh, so much of what I wanted to be great about Dying Light 2 that I thought was great was like the city and the verticality and the parkour and stuff like that stuff was fantastic this seems to like kind of scale all of that back dramatically it, there's a lot it of does. running around on foot on the ground not a, they didn't really show to any parkour a, or they showed some this is but, supposed to be a 20 hour game with a s- new map but smaller than Dying Light 2 um, and less vertical is what it looks like anyways. Yeah. I, again, I, I think that because they removed the two from the name, like yeah. they're much it's more just, inspired by the original game. It's just a bit of a disappointment on that regard for me. Um, but I do still think dying light one is the superior game. So maybe it's not a big deal. We'll see. Yeah. But I'll also play like, it. I, lo- I, the, I love me some dying light. I mean, dying light Two just fucking crashes so hard at the very end of that game. Just like, like the literally last like four hours. is just garbage. It is. It is. And that's the only part that I remember <laughs> when I look back and I think about it because it was so disappointing and also like literally falls apart at the seams from a technical standpoint, at least at, around the launch window. It's probably a lot smoother of an experience now, but still, uh, yeah, lots to lots to be disappointed about. Yeah. From that 
game. But hopefully this is this is an I mean like that last um expand alone that they did for Dying Light One, um with the buggies. What was it called? Somebody help I, I me. I don't remember the name either. I never it was good. It. it was good. Okay. Uh a lot of a lot of fun driving around the world with Nolan uh and Jaeger and stuff, I think. And the following, thank you, Seibel in chat. Um that was great. I hope this is kind of maybe drawing on some of that for for, for the beast, but we'll see. Um what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, I mean, there was there was plenty to talk about. You had uh, uh, but like, h- how about uh, what, what was it? Uh, Directive eighty twenty. The the new okay. Dark Pictures the, game. I was gonna say the only thing that I found to be really compelling about that in any way is that they it, at the end it was like surprise. This is a Dark Pictures game, which I did not see coming. Um. I think that's fucking cool. Like the fact it, that no, it's, it's, it's it is so out of left field compared to the rest of the Dark Pictures games. Like I may actually play this. Like uh, this is the one where she's like the doppelganger, right? It looks like like the evil doppelganger, like star on like a space station. There's an and one she's being chased by herself or something. And, and maybe like right? the the thing in a way, like you know, simulating yeah. and imitating. Uh, well, you know, I'm here for it. I. It, I've just had I kind of dropped off the dark pictures thing a while ago and never got back on that brain, but uh, you know we'll see we'll see. I'm all, I'm hopeful. Um, also, uh, how about Secret Level? This sounds pretty mm, fucking cool. Secret Level was maybe one of the it it was a it was a nice surprise. What is it that? Was I don't know what that is. I saw Secret, Space Marines in it. And Secret I it off. Level. All right, I'll tell you what. Secret Level is a project from Blur Studios. You may know them as the studio that does all those really crazy, beautiful cinematics they've been doing for years and years and years. Uh, they've basically for the past three years have been working on an anthology TV series, which is going to premiere on Amazon Prime. And every episode of the series is like is in their signature like ridiculously beautiful animation style right but it's all but they're pulling from various different like each episode is focused on the character or or, or story from different, different video, video game, game universes yeah. so they showed uh they showed i think they showed space marine right or warhammer they were um, warhammer they showed fucking god of war kratos like in yeah, sh- which looked like a 19th century london like what the fuck it looked I, like it's it the Keanu Reeves was somewhere in there, which my I, my first thought Keanu was Reeves Keanu Reeves is, is the doing... protagonist of the Armored Core episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my first thought was it's 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 cyberpunk, but then it turned out he's in the Armored Core episode. So it's like a bunch of like just randomly chosen video game series or series being turned into these like standalone episodes of television. Um, it looks fucking. There's awesome. there's also. <laughs> uh, there's also the Outer Worlds. There's Unreal Tournament. There's Concord for some reason. There's Mega Man. Like yeah, there's a Mega Man thing in there. Capcom, which... what the fuck are you doing right now? There's uh, there's a there's a Pac Man thing. So you got so you got they got so the one that got me excited was Sifu. Oh, Sifu. Yeah, I was like, that's a gonna be episode. fucking cool. Yeah, dude. This is a uh, it, it. It's. Man, I, I honestly maybe one of the highlights of this opening night live for me, which I wasn't expecting at all. Um, also, a nice moment of uh, just grounded humanity from the creator who is tearing up while trying to like talk about it on stage. Yeah, which Tim was nice. Miller, yeah. it, gave, it gave me it very much gave me like uh, um, the rabid sky vibes all over again. Remember that uh, when he was first talking about his game? That was that was nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Looks like a really cool project's coming out in December on Amazon Prime, and that's mm-hmm. pretty neat, if you ask me. Um, game wise, too, there was a few, couple other things that were uh, some other surprise. Well, you mentioned the Peter Molyneux thing earlier, and I, well, I what? Know. Here we go. I, I don't want to go. I don't want to get into it because honestly, I kind of turned. I, I kind of turned my brain off the moment he came out on stage. I'm gonna. I this, just. I was like, he's back. What? This motherfucking scam artist who has spent the past eight years doing mobile content and NFT bullshit has realized that he's basically run out of money for 22 cans because the fucking bullshit he's pulled off over the past eight years. So he's decided to do a game called Masters of Albion, which is basically black and white, but set in the fucking world of fable. Like, 
How did I don't it, get, I don't understand that. How? I, how did I don't he, know. Like, how did that? I don't know. He doesn't own the fucking license to Fable or the IP. So, like, how is it that he can just come out on stage and say, oh, my game is set in the world of Fable? I, I, part of me, I kept wondering, because, like, I was watching this and I was like, is, is somebody at Microsoft somewhere looking at their screen going, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> like, 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 learning about this with everybody else? He's, he's um, pulling, like, you know lawyers were on the phone the second that got... Well, ready. I mean, I don't think Jeff Keighley would allow it on stage if, if there was some kind of legal question I think question Jeff Keighley will it. take just, any money that gets thrown his way. I mean, but... All right, he, let's he move would, on. We got would, games to talk about today. We don't give a shit about this. He would never risk alienating Microsoft. Okay, anyways... um. Uh, they did show uh, a nice feature right about Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Still a dumb mm-hmm. name. Um, it was they mostly Troy the Baker talking. They got the punches. They got. They the got whips. the fucking they got punches. The that was my one complaint about the gameplay reveal of this this fucking game was that the sounds weren't there. The 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 hard impacts, those classic over the top uh, sound effects, they weren't really there. But now they're here, and that's fucking exciting to me. Um. At, at one point, Troy Baker's talking about the game, and he he just kind of mentioned offhandedly that uh, these he, he, the game has these big open environments to explore freely to solve puzzles and find treasure and stuff. And I was like, that could mean anything, but it was certainly made my ears perk up because I my my deep deep down my biggest concern is that this is going to be some like super linear game, and I'm hoping it's I'm hoping it's not. I'm but uh you know. I'm I'm hoping that it's maybe more akin to like Uncharted Four in terms of like it's still linear. They're still funneling you down a path, but there are moments where you have the freedom to kind of branch out and explore things. And and whatever. I have I have it's cool. I haven't dove into the review the the preview event that happened recently. I need to read the articles, but from what I've briefly learned is that this is the he just jerked biggest, off to the pictures. <laughs> this is the biggest project that Machine Games has ever done. Like it's it's bigger than anything they've ever done before. What? I'm completely ignoring Brad. Eh, just a buzzword. I, I don't know. I, oh, I feel like that was such a good been, joke. I'm sorry. It's been what five six years since the new Colossus came out. Like they've taken their fucking time with this project. I am granted. I have rose tinted glasses when it comes to anything Machine Games has worked on. At least you recognize this, and that's I fine. Recognize I mean, this. I I hope I. I I really hope it's good. It also got a release date for, uh, well, a release date and confirmation that it's a timed exclusive. It's coming out December 9th on Game Pass, PC and Game Pass, yeah. and in March for PS5. Um, so, good news. I think that's all. pretty much all. I mean, I mean I'll mean, i play it if it's good. I mean, yeah. honestly, I, I, could, I don't really care too much about the uh, world of uh, fucking, uh, you know. Indiana space, Jones? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, fucking Chris Davis's favorite fucking series, Machine Games previous series. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Yeah, I don't really give a shit about Wolfenstein. I mean, I I, I like Indiana Jones more than that stuff, so I don't see why I wouldn't. I mean, I played both Wolfenstein games, so I'll play this. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. Both, the the people who made games. Riddick the coming back ones. and making a new melee focused first person game. Like, and notably making it in just under the wire for the sake of Chris Davis's fantasy. Critic. I just want y'all to know that trailer <laughs> talk next week is going to be very exciting because I just added 25 Space Marine 2 videos. And fuck you. Let's watch it. Dude, let's yeah. watch every no, I'm single wrong. one. I'm wrong. We're going to watch them all. Yeah. Let's watch every gonna, single one. Okay. We're going to have crispy narrate every single one. Um, also, maybe the last thing we, before we move on, unless y'all can think of anything, um, they close the, the, the show out with a, a surprise announcement of uh, Mafia, the old country. It's just a teaser, cinematic teaser trailer, which is not surprising, I suppose, but it's the next game from Hangar 13. Um, and it looks to be a period piece, like set in, in like early turn of the century um, Sicily, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it for me, it felt kind of strange that it was like this was like kind of the thing that you close the show out with, because I think Mafia, even though it's it's a well-known franchise, I've always felt like it's still kind of like. Niche in a degree to a degree, I mean, like, it's not it's not Grand Theft Auto, it's not got that like that level of popularity, but there are people out there who really love this series. Um, 
And ha- my my favorite thing they've done so far for that franchise was the actual the remake of the original Mafia, which I imagine is kind of the foundation for what they're doing with this. Because that was just a really solid, well-made game. But we've talked a lot about how it's kind of like L.A. Noir-ish, where like the open world doesn't serve much of a purpose outside of just serving as like a really pretty backdrop for a linear story. But that linear story is always really good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm I'm eager to. I guess we're gonna find out more about this in December. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. But it was kind of a nice surprise. Yeah, it, it's um, a nice surprise. I think that was the wrong way to end the show. Like it they, felt like a little bit of a fizzle out. I mean, the whole show is kind of fizzling out. It, the whole show, it, like, you know, this happens a lot at, like, especially these, these Jeff Keighley events where, like, about, you know, a third of the way into it, you kind of know you, the temperature has been taken, right? And you can tell, like, the, the, the live audience has kind of decided what kind of show they're watching. Um, and you can start to feel the energy leaving the room. <laughs> Um, yeah. And you like felt that happening pretty uh, hardcore here. It, it felt uh, like a very quiet crowd. Like yeah, they were man. they were not giving Keeley any time to like, you know, have applause lines and wait for his things X, Y, Z. Like it feel yeah, very yeah. much hype in that room. Hey, right. um, real quick. I to be fair, I was adding 25 Fish Marine to uh, videos to our playlist. Literally 25. I counted. Um, oh, great. When you are talking about Peter Molyneux. But no, what I'm looking Wait, here what? is like this Albion is actually has nothing to do with Fable. He's just yeah. using using the name. The name. Yeah. This dude is going to get sued. Yeah, he, because he might think he can do that. But like Microsoft, it could just sue him because that's, well, that's what I'm. But that's what I'm saying. You know, a like, lawyer can argue that that's actually stupid. You can't do that. But like. That's what that's what I was saying a minute ago is that like I don't think Jeff Keeley would let him show that on his stage. One thousand percent, he would. He would. He doesn't. You think care. at the risk of alienating Microsoft, he doesn't he's care. Like, he's not gonna. He's not gonna. Microsoft's not gonna care. This is something between. I mean, uh, Phil Spencer is not gonna care. This is something between Microsoft's lawyers and Peter and Molyneux. Peter Molyneux. Yeah, Keeley has control of two of the biggest media events in gaming every year also you know what he you know this is this is pure speculation this is probably not gonna happen but like i wouldn't be surprised at all if he, if he did that intentionally knowing that he was gonna he was going to be sued and then he was gonna be forced to change the name but at that point he's already gotten the headlines people are gonna suddenly nobody know that he's working on a game again he's a and it's gonna own grifter he's been he's doing like, some shady stuff since th- this he, might have been a power move just to just to get the the publicity for this game that he inevitably knows is going to have to be changed. Like the game is the name of the game. Next time we see it is going to be masters of some other random ass word or whatever, but we're going to know that it started as masters of Albion and it caused a shitstorm with Microsoft. And at that point, uh, the, the quote unquote damage has been done. Uh, people it's in the zeitgeist. People know what it is. That's yeah, what, that's my guess. If you, if you want some really good reading, Go look up Rock Paper Shotgun's interview with him from about 2016 or 2017, in which there was just after the fallout of like the the contest that fucking fell through and they never did anything for the guy. Right, right, right. Uh, he they it is such a great interview. The the guy directly asked Molyneux, "Do you believe that you are a pathological liar?" Huh. Just like to his Damn. fucking face. Like it's go look that up. It's it's a great article. That sounds cringy. I don't know if I can handle that. Anyways, um, let's. That's enough news. It's just. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I take that back. I just want to. There's been some release dates um, that I think are. We got a bunch this week, right? So Dragon Age, uh, Silk Veilguard, Song. Silk no. Song got a release date of 2029. Yep. No. Um, Val got delayed. So Val did, got um, delayed to, to February, Kingdom which I think is Deliverance move. 2 got delayed. There's been some other delays. It's starting to happen. But, yeah. which is maybe a good thing, but like uh, the Plucky Squire is coming out September 17th. Mm, um, that's damn happening. God damn it, Nolan. Um, a new trailer for Silent Hill 2 dropped, and it's kind of turned the tides a little bit on that game in terms of people. There's more. Po- there's a lot more positivity around that, which I think is great to see. Yeah, there was um, a preview event that basically was preceded right before that trailer hit, so... Yeah, people were, same um, with Dragon Age, literally. Same with Dragon, Dragon Age. Dragon Age is having kind of the same effect, so mm-hmm. people are starting to come around on that. 
Um, all we I, needed I, to hear was Claudia Black, to be honest. I feel <laughs> like that sort of anchored us. Okay. Maybe they can and, pull this off. And that's coming out October 31st. It's coming out on Halloween. That's kind of exciting. Um, what else? What else? Shadow of Chernobyl, or Stalker 2, Shadows of, or Heart of Chernobyl, uh, was pushed to November 20th. But had um, like a 20 yes. minute like that one we, we discussed. But had a 35 minute gameplay demonstration that moved that game to the very tippy top of my most anticipated list. I'm so fucking excited for that game. Wow. Um, in fact, that is kind of the impetus for my PC upgrade that I'm doing uh, this week. Yeah. Um, which I'll That's, talk about maybe in a Wukong. quarter minute. I thought it was Wukong. I mean, Wukong. Wukong was definitely something that I was like, oh, it'd be nice to have it for Wukong. But I was like, I, 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 may, I mostly want it for Stalker. Um, I will say briefly, that is newsworthy. But like uh, Black Myth Wukong is breaking fucking records. It, it, it literally became the number two highest for concurrent users on Steam of any game. Not just as th- certainly the highest single player, but like right. th- those numbers are crazy high for a single player game. And it but shows that like China is a market that yeah. is probably no longer going to be ignored. And it, was, it wasn't ignored before, but it was it was mostly like like um, custom uh, uh, versions of like multiplayer games, you know, that. But that also you like, get, you in like MMOs. And, and like shooters and stuff and and that was kind of the things that non-chinese devs would like release in china and but i feel like this, this is a one single thing, player game and for one it to thing do that's, this, this numbers is crazy but like one thing that's that's i keep seeing I, I keep seeing a lot of people like when they're talking about how this is like surpassed elden ring as like one of the most concurrent players right you also got to think about uh elden ring apparently is one of those games that is is not sold in china like you're not allowed to yeah, play it yeah. or stream it or whatever like, it so like, like skeletons and stuff. so like i mean but, but a lot of times work. games will like change the skeletons into something else you know there are certain things that aren't allowed for reasons like that right right uh, also but, i but found it really have, funny have, yeah oh, but like who, who would have thought that a high fidelity adaptation in china of the most beloved fairy tale in china journey to the west would actually you know sell well Right. Did you see that, that, you're being that sarcastic, clip? but but like, OK, one, I don't think enslaved like popped off over there or anything. And no. two, like 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 you, don't, you can't discount like the, the just how high it wasn't made. In China, it's though. not just that that it's not just that the game is successful in China. It's like more successful than like most games, period. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's like the numbers are astronomical. I mean, um, video games are just so gatekeep gate kept in China. It's it's not, yeah. Nothing, I mean, it's a nothing, weird it's a weird get thing. In. Yeah, they're you know they have weird regulations. Like there was this mm-hmm. whole thing of like people were like, oh, if the numbers were so high, then how come there's only like three hundred thousand people playing right now? And it's because China literally has like government issued time limits for games. Also, so like they literally all got cut like, off from the game. Yeah. Also, like that clickbait, clickbait article in question, like that got published when China it was fucking nighttime. Like people were asleep. Like, what do you fucking yeah. expect? Yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up is the clickbait article because they were like, "Black Myth Wukong drops two million something players or whatever in, in ten a matter minutes." Of hours. Like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's like, but it, it's, it's it's not even it's not even it's, the fact that it was so nighttime. Weird. It's literally the fact that like. It, it's like it's like yeah. when you put a parental timer on like your kid's switch or whatever and, and it and it makes them stop playing you know or an alarm goes off that it's like that but like on a government level it's actually crazy yeah. it's actually crazy and gross but whatever that's not what we're here to talk about all right let's yeah, yeah. let's move on um we're gonna <laughs> we're doing it in one take tonight guys let's let's there have been games that we're playing so i, I do want to make sure we find time to talk about them and brad you got have? a game real quick what do y'all have what do we Oh, I, uh, I, I, I posted, I, I sent Chris Davis footage of this, but you don't have Just to say it. the rundown. You don't have to play footage. I, I, I will say this really quickly because this, no, this, no, no, I don't want you to go first. I'm just curious to what y'all have to get, kind oh. of gauge how long I should take talking about my games. Well, I wasn't really planning on talking about Bioshock too, but I've been playing. Bioshock. All right. What about Chris Davis? Yeah. <laughs> the only, here, the only thing I've been playing and I barely have anything to talk about really is EDF. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and you've talked about that actually a couple yeah. times, I think. Now, yeah, okay, I so it now, so that that's there you go. That's all, all 100 levels, all 200 levels. Crazy. 
but did you beat them all on all difficulties? Oh, no, I've only beaten on hard. I'm working on hardest right now. And then after that, I have Inferno. So, yeah. Are you so really say, doing that? It, they're really quick Mitches, man. He 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 he's done that I think with other fun. EF games. He's yeah, it's okay. weird. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Mission one thirty seven is a giant kaiju fight with giant. So I mechs. did. It's hilarious. So I did get the number right. I was like, apparently one thirty seven is really good. I was just pulling that number out of my ass. I was right. Yeah, that that was actually the number. Yeah, it was. Fuck yes. Uh, I had such a shitty grin on my face. It was so good. I'd say the main new thing I've been playing uh, has been Steam World Heist. To the much surprise, the surprising sequel to Steam World Heist One. You know who saw it coming? I didn't, and I was super excited because I, I love Steam World Heist. Steam World Heist Two is uh, you know a similar type of side-scrolling uh, XCOM meets Peggle type game again, and it's great. Uh, the new twist here is that it's sort of like a seafaring adventure. The, the last one kind of took place in space. You were kind of going around like a galaxy map, like nodes on a thing, you know, you were kind of stopping by bars and, but going to missions and whatnot, boss fights, but it was very like, um, you know, Mario galaxy two, if you will, if you recall, um, this you're kind of, you're in a boat slash submarine and you have this world that you're kind of sailing around and that's kind of how everything is connected. And except now your, your ship ha has also like its own upgrades and there's combat outside of, uh, your normal, uh, steam world heist combat, which is like, you know, the meat of the game, obviously. And, and this is just sort of a new way to kind of connect everything, but the actual like ship combat is actually like pretty fun. It, it, every it, it's, it's a little, I don't want to invoke like vampire survivors or anything, <laughs> but it is your weapons do kind of like fire automatically and they are like positional. So it's all about kind of like timing um, your weapon and it's reloads with kind of like your position with the enemy. So you're kind of like trying to like flank them and like maybe like spin around and drift around because you're the cannons on the other side or the guns have may have reloaded and then kind of flip around to the front because your torpedo is ready to go. It's light, but it's fun and there's upgrades tied to it and it's compelling. I feel like this developer knows how to make a really compelling like like loop in a compelling like upgrade uh, like like a kit like a good carrot on a on a stick sort of um like upgrade good carrots system. yeah good good carrots good carrots on a stick you went on the string you know what i'm talking about damn it um and in terms of like the main like you know x commie gameplay um like the moment to moment is like similar to the first game but like i th i feel like they went all out with like the like the class building i mean the first one had classes but now like like there's so many like more like the, the classes have these extensive skill trees and you unlock slots to like pick and choose skills from other that you've learned from like other skill trees and like the weapons have like so much um there's like a lot of variety to the weapons and item slots um that you can equip on a character and you can find like rare versions of weapons that have like very unique effects and unique takes on on that weapon um and it really does lead to this feeling of, of like really creating these builds and these team compositions that do like these very specific things. And it's just, it's just a really fun, like style of gameplay. Like they, um, you know, because, you know, like, like XCOM, you know, it's like pretty easy to like put yourself in a situation where you can get fucked up, uh, pretty easily. And, and like, there's like an alarm system or whatever, that's like constantly pushing you forward. So you can't like dilly dally and like play it safe. Sometimes you just kind of have to push into the, you know, the second level of your movement where you don't get to do an action, right? Because you got to get to a place, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, because it's very, it's very cover based, like XCOM. Right. Um, Chris Davis knows what I'm talking about. You know, you play a little bit of XCOM. I, Nick. I did yeah, play a little but bit. You know, I'm you, 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 you kind of have a range where, like, you, you, your first, like, range, you can, like, you know, maybe, like, move and get into cover and actually, like, take a shot. But then you have, like, your sprinting range or whatever. Like, like, the levels can be quite sprawling with, like, multiple objectives and, and sometimes you got to take risks like that. And, and, you know, it's pretty easy to get blown up, but, but then just like the lining of the shots and like, and like, uh, I'm going to line up perfectly and hopefully I'm going to get a headshot or I'm just going to like barely miss, but I'm going to shoot their hat off, which becomes a collectible, which is, you know, always 
That looks fun, immensely exciting. satisfying, but that was in the first it is, one, right? It's, it is, and it's like because there's like, yeah, it is in the first one because there's like stakes to this, like like um, maybe you haven't played the first one, or do you remember like uh, Invisible Ink, Nick? How mm-hmm. like the longer you you play, you you stayed in a stage, like like the level would get higher and higher, and it would get more and more intense. You're like, oh, I got to get the fuck out of here because shit's getting remember. crazy. That's how missions in this game are like, and so like I've I've come across because I feel like. I don't know if the hat, the hats aren't random necessarily, but I've come across a couple of like a couple of instances where there's been a really good cowboy hat that I wanted, but I couldn't like make it happen. I didn't have enough time. So I, you're I just spending all your effort trying to shoot this guy's hat off. Yeah, I didn't have enough time to fuck around and like intentionally miss a shot. You know what I mean? I am playing on like a harder difficulty. You, there's actually a lot of like really customizable options in terms of difficulty to kind of find like like what you know the right vibe you want but i really kind of like how mine's set at because i always feel like you know i'm just barely kind of getting through while still kind of getting all the stuff and not having my dudes like be destroyed in a mission um but like it's fun and it's like it still feels very unique right because like the last one came out like fucking 10 years ago or some shit and like 10 years later like i still feel like nothing feels like this and it's cool and like the music it's so good. Like the vibe's good, the look is nice, but the music, man. The, they they the have this always band. Great in these games, right? They have this band uh called I don't know what they're called, but like but like the band is actually in the game as like robots and and this band like also performs as like painted robots like in real life or something. But anyways, and and they're in the game. Here. What what is the band called? Um they're in the game like and when you go to the bars it plays like these songs from them and it's like fucking good like it's like like it feels too good for this game We're which is like a really most good game like cantina levels of good or like just just playing fucking bangers like I'm, I'm gonna download this shit on fucking spotify or whatever because i'm gonna listen to this at when i'm driving to work or something you know it's like it's good shit it's like it feels too good for the silly little robot game which is weird no one knows what I'm talking about. What are they called? They're called like Space Giraffe or some shit. Space Giraffe. Uh, space Giraffe. I mean, I mean, they're, they're not like a band that you would have like heard of or anything. I don't know. Is this like a like someone in chat must know? Space Giraffe sounds familiar. No, I mean, I, I don't know. Ugh. Space don't Giraffe know. was a 2007 Xbox Live arcade game. <laughs> oh, that's by, Jeff, one. by Jeff Minter. That's, okay. Yeah, that's a Jeff Minter. Game. Soft. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know what I'm saying. Well, that explains <laughs> why it sounds familiar then. Uh, what are they called? <laughs> Steam Powered Giraffe. Sorry. Steam Powered Giraffe is the name of the band. They made music for this game and it's really good. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like super addictive, super fun. It's just like, highly recommend just a just a really cool. good time if even if you never played the first one it doesn't matter they're not it's not that kind of i actually picked up the first anything. one because it was like three dollars it was on sale for like three bucks yeah a while yeah back. i mean just but i mean you know just play this one i guess if you're want to play something new because it's not like you need to play the first one first or anything but the, although there's some the builds get pretty exciting though, from that right one. huh the builds get pretty exciting though right the bills this is a pun what am i not catching here no, the like builds? with your characters, like how you spec them out with XP and their skills and stuff like that. Oh, the builds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very exciting. Like just a good, good skills, good skill tree. You know, you see stuff, you're like, oh, I can't wait to get that because it's going to make my sniper so much fucking better. And like you have all these, you have a lot of options in, ba- in, in combat in any given turn, which I feel like that makes a good strategy game where you're really kind of pushed to the limit, but you have a lot of like choices. So it's not like you're kind of doing the same thing. Like, you know it's good it's really is it steam powered yeah. giraffe steam powered giraffe yeah 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 that's just said it. unorthodox like, unorthodox in chat mentioned a story about listening to a song from steam powered giraffe after a breakup i was just wondering oh. if that was the that was that's the, what i'm saying like the music feels like <laughs> like good it's breakup <laughs> like, music like, is, that, is that your pitch it's breakup music? no 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 it just i'm like i'm like yeah i don't know it just feels too good for a little guy. They got great it. vibes. I listened to it after my divorce. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyways. But yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So it's it's been fun. It's been super fun. And it's not the only thing I've been playing. I've been also playing some 
Thrasher, Thrasher, which is a new VR game from people what made worked on Thumper. 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 Oh now yeah, there's this thing. Thrasher. And let me tell you, like if you okay, I'll say this. This is like this is like footage I recorded off my headset. <laughs> it's not gonna and I want to be very clear that you're not gonna get much from watching this versus it's gonna blow your skirt what off. it's like. Yeah. What it's like in VR <laughs> for a couple. I of feel years. like we have to say that before everything we show on here. That's VR. No, 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 no. I mean, especially that's, something like this, maybe. I guess. Especially something like this, because because I, I feel like when you're watching, like, uh, you play your fucking Horizon game, like you get it, right? Like, oh, you're climbing. You know, you understand what VR is like. You're like, oh, that's probably pretty fun, or whatever. You mean like that Batman thing, or whatever, right? Right. But here, this is something. Are y'all familiar with Thumper at all? It's kind of like a I mean, music and rhythm familiar. game. Yeah, they I'm call it a rhythm with... violence game, but it's yeah. sort of like a lane based. Like you have this like fucking chrome beetle like flying through like yeah. this yeah. colorful it's space, like some with like almost rock rock album cover or some shit, and yeah. and like you're slamming against the walls. It's all presentation, right? But one of the really cool things about that game was just like you know like the cool like psychedelic or just like very you know like colorful in colors and chrome and space and and you get to these bosses that are like the size of mountains and stuff and it's just fucking cool vibes cool music cool game and this this has similar energy right and it's funny because this is like the first level i'm on that's like white like this and again kind of hard to convey in this video footage but one of the things that you super can't convey and, and at a first glance this is kind of like a Oh, I don't know how to describe it. Jesus, this is crazy. Um, so so kind of take something like a geometry wars or whatever, actually. Take something like a geometry wars. Um, but you steer like like with my hand or whatever, like I have a big like snake that follows it around. Like like anywhere I move, like the snake is whoosh, whoosh, kind of following me. And and in these levels, I'm trying to like um, you know, hit things or like destroy things and evade other things and then after you know a certain like segment it kind of scores you and you move on to the next part of the stage it's very like a kind of a fast moving go 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 like kind of a score based thing and then at the end of the level you get to like a boss fight and then like there's like maybe like three parts of like a, a main stage which has like this aesthetic where you're kind of running into this boss again and it ends in like the final boss fight with that thing um and again, on a flat video, it's really hard to convey like the sensation uh, that 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 the game is is pulling off here. And one of the things that is pr really impressive about Thumper was that sense of scale. Like when you would, you you just be like, see like this bold pitch black monolith off in the distance, or like a crazy like boss would come out of out of a fucking black hole or something, and it'd be the boss fight. And it's that sense of scale that was so impressive and and you would think that oh well can you pull that off in a game that that is almost like borderline geometry wars like esque and and the answer is yes and and the, and the why it works you you're never going to get watching this footage especially if you're watching on stream it's that when you start a stage the stuff is like feels like it's like 3 feet in front of you like almost like you have a mm. little like geometry war geometry wars like level and just right in front of you almost like you could reach out and touch it but every time you progress to like you, you see my score pop up it starts to get further and further away huh. further and further away like as you progress through the stage and by the time you're like near the end of a stage it's like you're looking it's like enormous you're looking up and all around and your snake which was like this little thing in front of you is now like the size of a fucking building and again you're never going to know what that looks and feels like and how awesome that feels watching this footage, especially, or even a trailer that's like well-produced and edited, but it is so cool in VR, like that absolutely sick, but you're, you're never going to know watching a trailer. It's just something you got to try. And I, so like the, and the music is on point and like the, the look, is on point i'll eventually get to a boss actually can you scrub ahead a little bit because i have yeah. a second stage that that is much darker which is actually what the um most of the i think a boss is coming up maybe maybe you, you'll see it 
here in a second. Well, whatever. Um, skip a little bit more, a little bit more. And this is just another stage because most stages are actually really dark, kind of like like a beat saber Ooh. level or something. Um, and again, God, I, looking at a flat version of this on my phone, it looks like tragically terrible. <laughs> but but in <laughs> VR, it's like dog shit. <laughs> in VR, it's like it's like kind of uh, wonderful. And it's such like a, a kind of a unique little arcadey style game, but with like you know the vibes and the music and the look in VR and the sense of scale, the sense of scale is what's so impressive. And as it gets like larger and larger and larger, and it's just, it's, it's really fun. Uh, here's the crazy part. Well, it's only 20 bucks. I feel like everything in the world is like fucking $35 minimum. I feel like in the world of games, like indie games are getting more and more expensive, especially VR games. VR games are so expensive. And they almost never go on sale. So to, to be able to like just open up the uh, the Quest store or whatever and have it just be twenty bucks is like super nice. Um, so I kind of recommend it for, for, yeah. for that for that price alone. But um, I will say that this game is like I am not good at this game. And like when I get to the end of a stage, it shows like leaderboards. And like the further I get into this game. Like I'm hitting like the top 50 really easily. Like my little piss ant, like first playthrough of a, of a stage score is in Mm -hmm. like the top 50 and I'm getting like B, 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 which, which I feel like, like until like the most recent stage I'm on felt like the absolute worst I could get as a score. Like, like Mm -hmm. I've seen B, A, S, S plus, B is what I've gotten almost every single time until I actually died on like stage four and these stages or, you know, like world four or whatever. And I'm like doing pretty good on the leaderboards to me. That's a sign that like, Oh my God, nobody is buying this game. And that's sad to me because I mean, what does that say for like VR that like a cool new VR thing that's like not super expensive from the creators of, you know, Thumper, like, which Thumper is a game that a lot of people didn't play in VR. I did play it entirely in VR with my PSVR back in the day. Super cool game to experience in VR. Um, even though it wasn't even necessarily like designed only for that. And this game right. actually is going to come out in a non or no, 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 that's not true. It's coming to like Steam later, and it, you can play it with a controller. But I would not play ever play this with a controller. This feels like it's too vibey. You want to be steering the snake. You want to be immersed. Hands. Yeah, you want to be immersed. Um, I don't know. I just I'm sad that that's not doing better. Like, and, and I'm not I'm not like shaming like you people. I'm shaming like the people who like live and die by VR because like I feel like those assholes should be buying this in droves because like. Of course, VR is not going to make it if you're not even buying your own fucking VR games. Because fuck you. <laughs> I mean, the, I the entire well, look at this. Li- this is a boss, by the way. Look, look at this tiny little head and my tiny little snake. You get no sense of how big it is in the game. It's actually crazy. Uh, but it's so fun just moving that snake around. It it looks so good too. The things that the colors are doing, it's like, you know, I. I I get the feelings that I got when like the first time I played res and honestly mm. thumper kind of gave me those feelings, but like that is such a powerful feeling in VR. Like res is a game that I feel like was came out like 20 or like, like 10 years before it was supposed to, because I feel like that game should have existed in VR before it ever did. Right. And by the way, res is amazing in VR. Um, yeah. The this way game I is cool. like, like, If you have, I forgot to make an overlay for this and people are asking what it's called. It's called Thrasher. Oh, it's it's called Thrasher. Um I I uh I have a Quest 2. You can get it for Quest 2. Um obviously uh if you have a Quest 3, you can get it for that too, but I I don't know. I think it's only on on Quest and um Meta, like the Meta headsets and Apple right now, but it is coming to like Steam and other stuff later this year, I believe. And I th- but it, I imagine comes up for me. It's it. super cool. It's super cool. Just to, you, just you, you imagine look what in the sounds alone. It's so oh, I, awesome. I'm certain you could jailbreak it. Probably. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's Thresher. It's neat. Sweet. Looks cool. It's certainly kind of in line it does with, not with look what they're known cool. for. 
Maybe I made it sound I, I, cool. It this sounds cool. Does not looks look like cool. dog shit. <laughs> yeah, this my little square right ratio like perspective. Uh, is, yeah, I didn't know what it was going to look like when I recorded it from just the headset, but uh, bad. You could probably make it not this uh, resolution or, or ratio or ratio, you know. But what was the headset you were using, by the way? Quest two. Quest two. Quest oh, Quest two. two. Okay, sorry. Um. Chris Davis, do you do you want to say anything else about EDF? I play Beat Saber all the time, Wall Carl. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Love Beat Saber. Chris Davis, anything you want to throw in there about EDF six that you haven't it's, already mentioned? It's just a fun time. I'm playing through the campaign again, right on the next higher difficulty level, and getting my ass kicked right now. But the thing about that game is that like it just keeps giving you new weapons, new equipment, and, and they keep leveling up constantly. It's it's a drip feed, but the minute you find a new exciting weapon, you're like, oh shit, this is gonna be fucking awesome for the next thirty I, levels. And then Did I see you've been playing this with like community members? Uh at all or not or just really community about members. It I, I kinda just been doing kind of match pseudo matchmaking. Um gotcha. the, the game's really you've been like, playing with randos? Yeah. Because uh, I guess the, that's the power of EDF. Like it's so simple and straightforward, it doesn't really fucking matter. Yeah, you don't need to know anybody. You, you really don't. Uh, like honestly, like, I have not had a bad randos? experience. No, none mm. of the none of the randos I've played with have been any problem whatsoever. They're usually far better than I am. Uh, mm. And it's it's also you have to realize that this game came out in Japan last year, so the West is only getting to it. So when I run into clearly Japanese players who have like, you have to realize this is a game that has like 146 missions at across five difficulty modes. And the game encourages you to beat the game essentially 20 times to hundred percent it. Only and crazy people would do that. Chris Davis. Yeah, yeah. But then I run into people who get, have like 50, 60% completion and I just think about the fucking amount of time that that requires. It's They're insane, crazy. but it's also really cool to just be kind of carried by these these amazing players who have so much badass wow. weaponry. So, you're, so you're so you're saying you're summoning on all your boss fights. I mean, did you even really play the game, Chris Davis? What the fuck? Don't oh, yeah. don't an, don't yeah. answer that. He's bait. He's baiting you. Oh, I, I, I will take that bait, and I will say that for every Elden Ring boss, I at least tried once or twice alone. That's Otherwise, the way to do it. I, I do did summon quite I, a that's bit. That's the way to do it. I feel oh, no man. shame because it's a tool the developers gave me. Dang, you didn't have to go all end all that. I was just joking. I took the bait, <laughs> and I was fucking going for it because fuck that conversation. Yep. Well, you're engaging in it. Okay, let's move on. Um... I'm not going to, I, whatever. I've been playing Bioshock 2. Don't ask me why. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've been doing. You don't have to roll footage or, or anything. That's just kind of what, what I've spent a lot of my time over the past week. I was traveling this past weekend and I needed to Does that feel like a deck. bad choice? You, you, you made it sound like you regretted that choice. No, 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 no. I mean, I played Bioshock 1 earlier this year. I mean, I, I set out to kind of replay the series because it's been so long. And honestly, I wanted to do it for a number of reasons. One, I wanted to try to like, um, I wanted to try to encourage the universe to give me a sequel to Bioshock, which we all know is coming. But it, I was like hoping like today was the day that we we're finally going to get an announcement uh, for Bioshock four. And it, of course it didn't happen. Um, but I, that I wanted to replay the series. And two, I wanted to play the series again. Now that I have now played through system shock, the remake of system shock and just kind of, see the differences because there are obviously a lot of them um and i really enjoyed my time with the first one and i'm playing this second one right now i had just so much i had forgotten about the second one but i like i'm enjoying it quite a bit i forgot that you i forgot that you play as a big daddy in the second one which is kind of cool um there but I'm honestly like the only thing i remember about bioshock 2. it's like the, it's like yeah it's like i remember liking bioshock 2 a lot couldn't tell you a goddamn thing about the story after, you know, it's been so long. Um, but I remember Minerva's Den being some of the best DLC I've ever played. So I wanted to get to that and play that again. So I'm going to do that after I finish it. Um, I'm almost Minerva's done. Minerva's Den with the base is game. better at, on the whole than the entirety of Bioshock 2. Right. But I, in, with that said, I'm enjoying Bioshock 2. It's yeah. just it's it is having played the remake of System Shock now. It makes me realize 
fuck. I want Bioshock 4 to like lean into System Shock more than Bioshock. Bioshock as a Bioshock 1 2 and Infinite I think are great, but like if you want to like bring the series back, do something wild and like lean into the System Shock systems and RPG systems and and stuff because System Shock isn't coming. I don't because th- now that System Shock three probably isn't happening or it's in limbo or something. You know, when when the next Shock game comes out, I feel like it needs to lean closer to yeah. classic System Shock because damn, that was such a good remake, such a good game. Um, and Bioshock just on the whole is just so much shallower. Um, still a really cool game, just so much shallower. So yeah, the the, the biggest flaw of Bioshock two is is the big sister how they just completely nerfed what that character was supposed to be and misused her. I don't even, I don't even remember a lot mm. of that stuff, but oh, I mean, she's no, the, I mean the, the, the loop in Bioshock two with her, with the big sister is that you rescue or kill all the little yeah. sisters in a level and she spawns in and attacks you. Well, the right. original intention of that, that character was to be like a Resident Evil two remake, Mr. X that roams the level and attacks you. Mm, instead of being as predictable as it ultimately yeah. ended up being. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, I'm playing it now. I'm just like, she's kind of a cool addition to like the lore uh, she of is. it and whatnot. Absolutely. Um, but mechanically speaking, nothing crazy. But anyways, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I, I, I needed something on my Steam Deck while I was traveling, and I didn't want to buy something new because um, I'm spending a lot of money. I'll talk about it on my four-player minute, but I've been spending a lot of money lately, so I was like, I'm not going to buy a new game um right the second so i ended up just i'll just play the next game in, my, in the bioshock series because i can knock that out pretty quick which i am doing um and yeah that's uh, and I, do, I dove back into final fantasy 7 rebirth forgot to mention that um but where are you at i am in co- or i'm in cosmo canyon um okay yeah, yeah uh yeah that area kind of mm. sucks <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm doing the trials thing right now. I think we're. Oh, well, I. Yeah, I actually I just did the thing where Red Thirteen learns the truth about oh. his father and all that stuff. How do you feel about um uh, Nanaki? How do I feel about him? The reveal. Yeah. I mean his I mean, his voice. Okay, I feel like I may not be far enough yet because Okay, then then let it cook. He'll he'll know You didn't get to Cosmo Canyon yet? I the fuck? Wait, you already got to the part with his father? Are you talking about the the old guy, the floating old guy? That's Bugenhagen. The Naki, dude. Red thirteen. Red thirteen's voice. Oh yes, that was shocking. Okay. All <laughs> that, right. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, Are you I forgot cool about with that? that? Because uh, it's like that for the rest of the game. Not not a fan. What a I, terrible really design fan. choice. I mean, I was terrible initially, creative choice. I was initially turned off, but and I kind of came to be turned off. off. I, Bullshit. Sorry. It's sorry. It's, stupid. it's been about a week since I played it, and it took me a hot <laughs> second. I, I was out of town. I, I, literally, I was talking to David about it, and I was like, oh, it pissed me off so much, and he got to it. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know. Oh, it, he's playing in Japanese. So, like, I mean, I don't know what it's. I know it sounds different to him, but he probably it's probably not the same effect as it is. I mean, that wasn't English. a bit that that wasn't a bit from the original game. If I don't remember, like, no, right? it's not like, in I the know, original fucking. No, 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 no. I I know it's not voice acted in the original game, but like, I they could still kind of suggest that his voice changed. I mean, you know even what I mean? if you do like a little suggestion, right? It doesn't matter because like it's not voiced and it's right. not like he's written differently either. I'm just saying, it's like this was a completely original the difference. Like his combat barks are different. Like everything is it's a completely different character and I fucking hate it. But yeah, we'll talk was... more about that in our spoiler cast. Well, apparently we're going to apparently Brad and I are going to do or well, Chris Davis, you finished it too, didn't you? I'll, yeah, I finished for everyone. I will be there. We're apparently going to do a spoiler cast for this game. Not which I don't know how time. I feel about. Can we David, do it before David, December? David with, wants to yes, do it. yes. David is the impetus for this. He really wants to do this. He's talking shit saying that Nick's going to take forever to finish. I think he's already done or almost done. No, I mean, I'm in Cosmo. Oh, you mean David? Yeah, yeah. David. Um, I don't know where he stands, but yeah, that's 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 what's going on in my world right now. So um, unless y'all have any uh, objections, we can we can wrap up with the four player minute. 
We do good? It. He was he was supposed to sound like a kid. Uh, I mean, what are you talking about, Rockus? He was supposed to sound like a kid. He's supposed to sound like the voice inside my head when I played that game in the 90s. And let me tell you, it didn't go from like cool, mysterious bio lab dog to f- literal fucking baby, literal child going, oh, good job, buddy. Like, it's so it's fucked up. It's fucked up. I can't even they, use that character in battle. Like after they did that. us dirty. I couldn't even do it. They did us like, a little for a while, dirty. I was like, what the fuck is that? Like I what was going on? It's oh, not it's as so bad stupid. as Chadley. Nothing can be worse than Chadley. Yeah, well Chadley, I just started scared. Chadley just talks too much. Okay. Um just in general. Is Chadley can't... exists. That that is actually kind of true. Uh, All right. Okay. Four player well, minute Brad. Go. Minute. I'll just do like a quick um um fantasy critic recap for myself at least because i feel like my thing has changed a lot since we last podcasted um i went from like last place to technically i'm in first actually um you have the most on the board as as far as releases right no i mean you have the same amount of releases the the thing is um so you're at 84 right now and i'm at 78 but mm. yours doesn't take into account your minus seven that's not going to show up to the end of the year so technically in terms of points i'm in first um does that make sense yes because you're my 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 counter is showing i'm all isn't. here's the thing i'm almost always looking at my own spreadsheet so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, taken it, I've already taken it into account. So the thing is, a lot of my games, a lot of people were like, oh, Brad, what are you doing so badly? And I'm like, look, my games are just not out yet. Just You just got to wait. The current points and the projected points don't matter. The The reason the projected points especially don't matter is because not only do they overvalue AAA and like super undervalue indie games, like indie games are almost always like three points max, you know, while like, space marine 2 is going to get like an 89 according to predictions or whatever you know what i mean like it's it's um also like with a not release everything in general is like undervalued until it comes out because a game is almost always going to make more points than it's predicted like for whatever reason a non-release game is really lowballed in terms of the score so like projected what i'm saying is projected scores don't actually mean anything and as soon as games start coming out like your predicted points start to skyrocket um here's the thing um so yeah i had a lot of games come out like a ranger came out it's up to an 81 now i mean it it, it was like an indica situation where it clawed it, itself it kind out of, of crawled depths. out of the depths right right um the most recent one is i picked up and it has since released tactical breach wizards currently out of 86 that's nice. the new, um New, new Fuck game me from dead. Um, I don't have that one the, marked down. The gunpoint developer. Fuck. Gunpoint developer. Yeah. Um, and I'm super excited to play. It comes out this week. I'm really glad that that's out. doing well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steam World Heist and World of Goo. I also picked up. Those are recent ones that they're both at 82. Um, and, you know, still have the ones from, from earlier. So, like, in terms of, like, my scoring games, and I think the games coming out, like, I'm pretty happy. Here's 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 my thing. Silk Song is a problem. So I, I do have that Mario game. I, so I have the unannounced Mario game and I have Silk Song. And I, I, I want to kind of explain the situation I'm in because um, my roster is full, but it's not technically full. The first thing I'm scared about is Space Marine 2 because when I bet against it, it was like a in January, it was just some Saber game that we didn't know much about. Now, now there's been 25 now trailers. there's been 20 more trailers <laughs> and preview events and people are getting really excited and maybe Saber's finally going to put out a a critical hit which is fuck me it's going to it's going to be bad right I hope that doesn't happen Ho- hopefully it stays around like a fucking 7980 but it's looking like it might be a little higher we'll see I mean never doubt their ability to fuck something up server side. So have you, it, you it haven't used your disaster. super drop yet, have you? Or did you? No, well, super drops. You're talking about my free drop. Oh, super you, drops you, are done. Yeah, yeah. Super you drops did use done. your super drop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Mina the Hollower, which. But they got to. Anna- they got. They've got. So, so wait, wait, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's Silk Song and Mario. So I have my. I have, we have unlimited will not release drops, and then I still have my free drop. But they got to say the, something. The issue I'm having is. So here's the thing. I still Silk Song could still come out. 
Like, absolutely. Now, every time one of these showcases happen, like today, and it's not there, everyone's like into the world, right? And it's a big meme. But like, there's still a lot of signs pointing to the fact that Silk Song could very easily still come out this year. That is a game that doesn't need a showcase because it's too big. It doesn't, any, even when it does finally pop up again, it's not going to be like, oh, we're coming out six months from now. Like, it's, that's the type of game that could be like, and it's out like, in a couple of weeks, right? Like it doesn't need a long marketing buildup or anything. It's not that situation. It's not that kind of game. So like it absolutely could. Also, it could. I could see like like another Nintendo Direct happening, like a Nindies or whatever uh, in September. In fact, all some of that's already rumored even for this month. Like it could easily show up at one of those and be out in a week, a month, a couple months. We have time. The thing is, if it doesn't ship, Team Cherry has a habit of not saying anything. So if they don't say anything, I can't, will not release, drop it. But the thing is, I've been holding on to the, to my free drop for Mario. The reason I have not used it yet is because there's also a chance that Nintendo could reveal the Switch too. And again, these were choices I made in January. And let me tell you, Silk Song, an unannounced Switch game, Switch 2 game, sounded like great pickups. Obviously, yeah. it's August now and it's a lot scarier. But even with Nintendo, they could absolutely reveal the Switch 2, have a Mario game in it, and it becomes a will not release drop. In which case, I would save the free drop for Silk Song. So, best case scenario is Silk Song comes out and I, I, I just drop Mario and replace it with something else. Or, best case scenario is I get a free drop on Mario because they announced that too or whatever. But it things are starting to get really scary and I, and I, it might end up in a situation where i'm stuck with one of those and that's a problem could be if silk song problem. comes out this year then like if we get a date then i think at this point i'm i'm the front runner even if space marine 2 scores better than than I, it should silk song cuz don't forget i got astrobot coming too silk song is going to be a 90 yeah, plus yeah astrobot astrobot has a plus. chance of hitting 90 and the rest of my stuff is is, you know, all eighty plus. It's 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 pretty strong. I think I have a chance to to maybe sense this, but clinch this. But Silk Song has to come out, so I don't know. It's looking more and more say, dire. I'm gonna say it, Brad. I don't think it's coming, and I don't think they're gonna say. But shit see, about that's it what everyone says. But in reality, there is there is no reason to be this pessimistic outside of the meme. Outside, I mean, Team Cherry is very quiet. So somebody on the Fantasy Critic Discord, SNES dude, he does like an insane amount of research. Like, see, sickle mode is an understatement for this man. He does like research. Like he he took like three major games in in he's like from mugging like people this year, and he did like... a fucking no. He did an audit. He did an audit on Open Critic to see he checked like on major games with like like a hundred reviews. He did this with Rebirth. He did it with Yakuza. He went to make sure like every single website that should have been on there isn't on there. Every single score isn't on there accurately. He broke down every single thing and did like an audit of the. And let me tell you, Open Critic's a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a mess. They do, they do mistakes. They don't post reviews. Sometimes they post the review. Like I have a SteamWorld Heist 8 that's supposed to be a 9 that I've been emailing them to fix. Like this is supposed to be a 9, not an 8 what the fuck are you doing they just ignore that stuff so it's a problem but anyways he offered some information about silk song i'll say this and then i'll move on i know it's long i'm running long so he said nuggets of hope evidence in 2024 for silk song march 17th 2024 fan bumps into left at day of the devs he says silk song is definitely before crow sworn now this is a crow sworn is a hollow knight um like knockoff like it, I don't know if you remember Crow Sworn. Look it up. It, it it like looks so much like Hollow Knight, but at the same time, also looks really good. That's been like the whole thing with Crow Sworn. Anyways, he said, oh. Silk Song is definitely before Crow Sworn. Oh. Also, Crow Sworn has a 2024 date right now. I don't know if it's going to hit 2024, but at the very least, that suggests that it's not like something that's like super far away. This can't um, be legal. <laughs> April 1st of 2024. <laughs> Fuck. April 1st yeah. of 20, and this is the stuff that more people know. April 1st of 2024, <clears throat> new Microsoft Store page is made. ESBR rating is added. This was in April. April 3rd, 2024, Silk Song gets several age ratings. 
June 6, 2024, Hollow Knight gets a free trial in Europe for NSO. That's really kind of all he had to say. But like with the ratings board and the fact that it, the more time goes on, if you actually believe that it isn't vaporware, which no sensible person outside of the meme is actually saying this game is not coming out, like the more time goes on, the more you have to believe that it's more likely that this game is just, just going to come out. So all I'm saying, I mean, it's rated. I'm keeping up hopes that um, that it comes out. I mean, there is like the concern, are they actually going to try to pour it off of Unity because it is developed in Unity? Yeah. That is a very real thing. That could really push a game back. It would explain the delay. could explain why they're quiet. Um or are they, did they make a new Nintendo with Nintendo and they're waiting for like a Switch 2 launch because that would be fucking enormous, right? We'll see. We'll see. Or an Xbox. Is there a new Xbox coming out this year? Like a model yeah, or anything? Like I, not that I'm Is aware Microsoft going to do anything else? The, the Any only sort of thing... like indie event, an indie event, Xbox indie I mean, there's the Game Awards. Yeah. The Game Awards is too late. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't hold on a game till December. When does the game awards? Now, it's if it's a shadow bar. drop at the game awards, there's a very good chance that I end up using my free drop on Mario and just going down with the ship on Silk Song. Because because of the potential of a shadow drop at the game awards is not zero. Remember, game awards did they shadow dropped Hades, the first Hades, remember? Like it's not unheard of. And like people have joked about it. Hi-Fi Rush was a big deal. Their shadow drop, right? Like there's a not zero chance that Game Awards shadow drops Silk Song. I need that game. I might go down with the ship. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, that was the longest four player minute, but also you're right. We didn't really talk much about fantasy critics. So that's fair. Uh, Chris Davis. Final thought for the week. I want to split my final thought into two parts. The first one. Uh, on a downer note, unfortunately, we today we lost uh, Atsuko Tanaka. She mm-hmm. is the Japanese voice actress most well known for uh, uh, Motoko Kusanagi from Ghost and Shell. Um, but y'all otherwise might know her as the voice actress for Bayonetta in Japan. So, oh mm, shit, I didn't realize yeah. that she was sixty one. Yeah. Really sucks. Oof. Rest yeah. in peace. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but on a happy oh, she was Kaine note, from Near. I'm assuming in Japan. Yeah, yeah. She she was prolific. She did a lot of work. Um, on a happier note, uh, Raphael Colantano, who is the one of the founding members of uh, now now I'm blanking the fucking game. Arcade. He also Arcade died. Studios. We didn't like him. No, we we Gosh. like Raph. <laughs> <laughs> Ra- Rafael Contano, he left Arcane back in 2017, mm-hmm. uh, and he founded a studio called Wolf Eye. Uh, their first game was in 2019, 2020. It was wor- a low game called Weird West. It was published by Devolver Digital. I don't know that much about it. It's actually 2022, sorry. Um, and it did all right. But over the past several weeks, he and Wolf Eye have been teasing their new project. And he started by basically tweeting out, hey, if you liked my previous immersive sim games, you're really going to like this. This is the guy who's responsible for Dishonored and Prey 2017. So. I like both of those games a lot. Both really fucking. He was on Prey? Yeah. He was. Hmm. Yeah. He, he handled. Uh, he was involved in it. Definitely. So. Uh. They are at Gamescom right now, pitching the game, demoing it, a vertical oh, slice. To and Mick publishers. Gordon is doing the music for this. Thank and you, Bog Mick Noise Gordon and Chat. And Mick Gordon is doing the, the music for it. And there are some offhand kind of blurry pictures of a television showing off first-person gunplay. And honestly, I'm getting pretty fucking excited. Oh, my goodness. I I'm, am excited for this too, but I would really like to know what well, it is. Well, what is your conclusion you're drawing here? There is, they have released a atmospheric teaser, which makes it look like it doesn't tell you much. Do, it doesn't tell you much, but it, it looks like a little bit of a Wild West kind of thing, similar to Weird West. And between that and their background making Dishonored and, and Prey 2017, like, 
Dishonored plus so, Prey plus Wild so, West. So a Wild West immersive sim, weird West immersive sim. Yeah. In okay. in the well, weird in West the vein was like of a Dishonored. pretty like basic action game, right? Well, I don't think this is actually related to Weird West. It just that's their first game. No, I, I know. I, I just mean like their their first foray was like the opposite of a deep game, right? Uh, yeah, I, I mean it was a, it was a top down action RPG thing. It wasn't. Oh, what am it, I thinking it, of? You, you oh, know, you're th- thinking of Hard West? No, not Hard West. There's so many like West XCOM game. Yeah, Are you thinking no. about Desperados Three? <laughs> no, that was Mimimi. No, there was another West game that was like Evil, Evil West. West. I'm thinking of Evil West. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. They just gotta this whatever this game is, even if it's like the Wild <laughs> West, they need to not put the word West in it. It needs to just, be different. Yeah, they just yeah, need weird, just Weird West was decent. I heard right. Not like yeah. crazy or anything. Yeah, but like it, it, neat. it did good reviews. Okay. It, from my yeah, understanding, yeah, I heard it was neat. Evil yeah. West. Okay, it wasn't making sense when you were when I was thinking it was Evil West as their first game. This makes more sense. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Very so, cool. Very there cool. was some immersive semi stuff in Weird West as well. There was, yeah, but I, th- I think it was probably pretty light considering that that was their their first. Oh, title. don't forget about don't don't forget about Blood West. No, no, Blood West, yeah. I can't we don't talk Blood about Blood West. West. Um, so, anyway, super hype for this. I am. I really, really, really hope that they show off the vertical slice soon. Because, God, or at least give us a title for the game and like maybe a. Where's pitch? Judas? How come? How come Judas is in that Gamescom? I mean, I think they when last they talked sh- about Judas, I think he said it was a ways off. It's it's still at least a year off, at least. And like they had a preview event with journalists coming out to play several hours of the game, like I remember, three, four I remember. months ago, something like that. So which is better I mean, than nothing, but it's that was the only time ways. we heard about it. Yeah. I mean, OK, you, you you should go out and listen to some of those podcasts that we're talking about. Like, I, did, I did. I did. Don't ever, I never don't ever tell Brad to do his research. He's always doing research. Yeah. I did. I know. I remember you were losing your mind. I remember we talked. Yeah, about it. I was. Fair, I was kind of. I was kind of losing my mind too. Why do you think I started playing Bioshock? I don't know. <laughs> um. All right. So for my four for player minute, uh, I'll also kind of split it into two. Uh, one, I saw Alien Romulus over the weekend, and that yep. was pretty exciting. Um, mm. I watched went, to, went to Colorado. Uh, for a couple days to visit family and ended up going to a draft house in Westminster, Colorado and watching it on like an enormous, they have like an enormous theater, but uh, with like great, I forgot what they call it. Um, 4d sound or whatever. I don't know, but it was cool. Great, great movie. Loved it. Um, but it also kind of made me start thinking about like, I mean, it, one, it made me want to replay alien isolation, but I feel like, more importantly, maybe I should focus on a game that I haven't played yet. And I was like, maybe I need to, it's time I need to play Alien Dark Descent. Yeah. Or Alien Dark Descent. Um, yeah. It's a fun so I'm game. thinking that maybe, maybe if I can find time for it, which probably is not going to happen, but that's something that's on my mind. And it, Aliens is Aliens is fresh on my mind. So, like, I kind of want a VR take, game coming out soon. I want to, yeah. yeah. And the, and, and that uh, uh, VR game. Rogue Incursion. I'm, Rogue Incursion, which I'm definitely going to have my eye on because that looks. That looks like a, if, if they pull that up, that could be really fucking cool. Um, so, yeah, a lot of alien stuff going on right now, and it's kind of fresh in my mind. So I kind of want to strike while the iron is hot and play it while I'm like thinking about it. But obviously, a lot of stuff's happening um, on the other side of this. Um, I decided I mentioned earlier, I decided it was time to upgrade, upgrade certain parts of my PC. Chris Davis was once again kind enough to help me pick out some parts Um and I've got, I officially have them all in, and hopefully Chris Davis is going to come help me install them soon because I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, more or less, it kind of came down to my system. The system I have now is kind of bottlenecking my GPU, um, not getting the most out of it. Um, I had no I, idea. I thought you had like a fresh build, like much it's, more recent. It's, it, I built it in 2020, but the part. Yeah, why is your CPU so old? Uh, don't, I mean, I don't know. It was probably, it probably came down to, uh, just what my budget was at the time. So the I mean, I you gave me were for a 6,700 K that CPU came out in like 2015. Yeah. That you, were you giving them info from your, your previous build? 
You did it to me? No, 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 no. I was. I literally was. Don't worry. I gave him the right stuff. You looked my on your computer is, and not yes, like I looked on my. PC I looked on my PC. List. I looked on my PC. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna upgrade that. I mean, it's it's mostly. I, I mean, I am gonna be playing uh, Wukong, but uh, more importantly, I, Stalker Two is fresh on my mind, and I want to be ready for that because that game just looks absolutely stunning, and I I cannot wait to get lost in that world. So. Uh, well, I figured it was time. Well, um, if, you, I also, if you end up streaming some Wukong, be sure not to talk about the feminist propaganda or dude, I'm, any I'm gonna, if issues I, you have. If I stream Black Myth Wukong, I am going to like, I'm going to title my stream feminist propaganda. And like, <laughs> that's it. Just, I, I almost wish somebody c- could put feminist propaganda as like a game in the Twitch library so I could like pick it um, when I'm streaming. But Anyways. Set the topic to just to, just chatting, and then yeah, yeah. feminist propaganda. There you go. Yeah, your process so, can't be that old. That's crazy. But anyways, uh, yeah, exciting stuff. So, um, looking forward to that. And that's and and yeah, like so, Black Myth Wukong is kind of like the first in a series of dominoes that are about to start falling for me in September because we got this, we got Outlaws, Star Wars Outlaws in ten days, Space Marine Two, Astrobot. Um, now the plucky squire, and then towards the end of the month, uh, Zelda. Tactical so like, breach wizard, dude. There's so much stuff. I'm so excited. Um, games, games are really starting to fall for me, and uh, I think September is going to be a lot of fun uh, to, for as far as playing games and especially talking about them because there's going to be a ton uh, to talk about in September. But UFO that's poo-poo. that's for September. Now is the this is the end of our show, guys. Thank you. You've made it the end of another episode thank you so much for listening uh we record these podcasts every single tuesday night at 8 p.m central standard time on twitch and youtube uh we usually get started at 8 p.m with trailer talk we watch trailers for 30 to 40 minutes together uh and then we sit down hit record and start talking so if you're interested join us there at twitch.tv slash four player podcast all spelled out um, you can also find all of our podcast episodes over at fourplayernetwork.com or on your preferred podcast service. But most importantly, if you're not in our Discord, we'd love to have you uh, join us at discord.gg slash fourplayer. We're hanging out there all the time, talking about games, talking about movies, all the good stuff. Uh, and most, and best of all, it's free. So we'd love to have you there. Um, but that's all we got for you tonight. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday for another episode. Uh, in the meantime, guys, be good to each other, play video games, and good night. Good night.